O oh, my Lord Shri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O oh, all-pervading personality of God. O oh, all-pervading personality of God. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. And the primal cause of all causes. And the primal cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations in the material world. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Uh, such, uh, 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 illusory oh. represent such as water seen in fire or land seen on water. The water seen the fire, land seen the water. <coughs> By him, only because of him, do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universe temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate world. upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute Dharma truth. Dharma projita kaitravutra. Dharma projita kaitravutra. Paramo nirmat saranam satam. Paramo nirmat saranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Sivedam tapa trayon mulanam. Shiva Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Parir Ishwaraha. Kimva Parir Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra. Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra. Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshanat. Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively Hears the message by, by this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Sukumukad amrita dravya sangitam. Sukumukad amrita dravya sangitam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur aho rasika bhuvi bhavuka. Mohur aho rasika bhuvi bhavuka. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, it's, it's become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam swak. Kata Krishna. Shravatam Sakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Idiantak Slohi Badrani. Idiantak Slohi Badrani. We do noti Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? Is it self righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. 
and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in Nasta hearing of him. Nasta praesu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhagavati uttama sloke bhakti bhavati naistiki bhakti bhavati naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and as he is a Krishna from Bhagavatam and from the devotees, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava, tadarajas tamo bhava, kamalo badayas chaye, kamalo badayas chaye, chaita itar anavidam, chaita itar anavidam, stitam satve prasiddhati, stitam satve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes free. From the more depressions of England. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When all these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in the position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. He becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Siyante chasya karmani. Siyante chasya karmani. Drutta evat manishwari. Drutta evat manishwari. Thus Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enable us to come at once to the stage of some chance of my grandma. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee. In Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Kanto 1, Chapter 18, verse. Number fourteen. Konama trip yet Rasavit Katayam. Mahatma Kanta Parayanusya. Mahatma Kanta Parayanusya. Nantam Gunanam. Agunasya Jugmur Nantam Gunanam Agunasya Jagmur Yogeshwaraye Bhava Padma Mukaya Yogeshwaraye Bhava Padma Mukaya Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada The personality of Godhead Lord Krishna, Govinda, is the exclusive shelter of all great living beings. And his transcendental attributes cannot even be measured by such masters of mystic powers as Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. Can anyone who is expert in relishing nectar, rasa, ever be fully satiated by hearing topics about him? Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma are two chiefs of the demigods. They are full of mystic powers. For example, Lord Shiva drank an ocean of poison of which one drop was sufficient to kill an ordinary living being. Similarly, Brahma could create many powerful demigods, including Lord Shiva. So they are Ishwaras, or lords of the universe, but they are not the supreme powerful the supreme powerful is Govinda, Lord Krishna. He is the transcendence, and his transcendental attributes cannot be measured even by such powerful Ishwaras as Shiva and Brahma. Therefore, Lord Krishna is the exclusive shelter of the greatest of all living beings. Brahma is counted amongst the living beings, but he is the greatest of all of us. And why is the greatest of all the living beings so much attached to the transcendental topics of Lord Krishna. 
because he is the reservoir of all enjoyment. Everyone wants to relish some kind of taste in everything, but one who is engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord can derive unlimited pleasure from such engagement. The Lord is unlimited, and his name, attributes, pastimes, entourage, variegatedness, etc., are unlimited, and those who relish them can do so unlimitedly and still not feel satiated. This fact is confirmed in the Padma Purana. Ramante yogino nante satyananda chinatmani itirama padenaso param brahma bidiyate. Their mystics derive unlimited transcendental pleasures from the Absolute Truth, and therefore, the Supreme Absolute Truth, the Personality of God, it is also known as Rama. There is no end to such transcendental discourses. In mundane affairs, there is the law of satiation. But in transcendence, there is no such satiation. Sutta Goswami desired to continue the topics of Lord Krishna before the sages in Namasaranya. And the sages also expressed their readiness to hear from him continuously. Since the Lord is transcendent and his attributes are transcendental, such discourses increase the receptive mood of the purified audience. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So what is the law of satiation? Well, in the material world, at one point, people say, oh, that's enough. I've had enough of that thing. I'm satisfied. So when they eat, let's say, we made some lasagna. So people ate one, two, three, maybe four pieces. And after that, they said, oh, that's enough. So that's the law of satiation. Or people might do something like uh, go to Disneyland, and after two, three days, they say, okay, that's getting bored now, I'm finished. So that's the law of satiation. So we see that everything in the material world is subject to the law of satiation, except one thing, that is Krishna Kata. If you develop a taste for hearing about Krishna, You'll never be satisfied. You always want to hear more. The more you hear, the more you want to hear. So that is, uh, everything about Krishna is contrary to ordinary life. Because ordinary life is limited and it's subject to the law of satiation and things deteriorate over time and nothing is eternal. So, therefore, there's a major difference between watching a good movie. Well, you might watch it once, maybe twice, maybe three times, but after a little while, so I've seen that movie so many times, I'm sick and tired of it. So that's, but you can go on hearing about Krishna unlimitedly and not get tired. In fact, Krishna tells Arjuna, Vistere nat mano yogam, vibhutim cha janardana, puya kataya tripti hi shinvato nasti me matam. So this means, O Janardana, again, please describe in detail the mystic powers of your opulences. Janardana means Krishna. I am never satiated. I am never satiated in hearing about you, for the more I hear, the more I want to taste the nectar of your words. This is the 10th chapter, 18th verse. So we see that the law of satiation does not act on a person who is hearing about Krishna. They're never satisfied. They want to hear more and more. They're enthused all the time. And every day, one learns something new, even though they thought they knew something. But they only know, the, but, but the reason is that the more we surrender to Krishna, the more he reveals to us. Te sami vana kam partha maham agyana mam tama nasayami apababa sto dhyana di pena basvato. So Krishna explains this point. He says that <clears throat> to show special mercy, 
I, dwelling uh, to show them special mercy, meaning devotees, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. So, when Lord Chaitanya was in Benares and he was chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra in public, doing Harinam Sankirtan, thousands of people were following him. <clears throat> and thousands of people, uh, and the, the, Maya, the leader of the Mayavadis in Benares, Benares is the seat of Mayavad philosophy. Right? And although there's Krishna, there are Krishna temples there, there's also a major temple of Lord Vishnu, El Shiva. And uh, mostly the followers of Lord Shiva go there. So Prakasananda Saraswati in the time of Lord Chaitanya was the leader, the head priest and the head brahmana of the Shaivites. And he was very influential and learned scholar. And he made fun of Lord Chaitanya. He said that Lord Chaitanya was a sentimentalist. In other words, instead of sitting rigidly in the, tem in the temple and studying Vedanta, he was out in the streets dancing, chanting uh, Hare Krishna. So, uh, Prakasananda uh, Saraswati Maharaj was criticizing him as a sentimentalist. He was just dealing with sentiments rather than with real knowledge. So, in the same way, sometimes uh, erudite scholars, they criticize the devotees because they think that most of the devotees don't really know Shastra very much and, and they're in the darkness of ignorance and are philosophic, philosophically naive sentimentalists. You know, they, they're more interested in having darshan of the deity rather than learning Vedanta. Of course, with the commentary of Sankaracharya, the Mayavad commentary. So, uh, but Prabhupada says that's not a fact. The devotees are actually highly educated scholars. Why is that? Because they are uh, advocating the philosophy of devotion to Krishna. Someone who has uh, taken up chanting Hare Krishna on a regular basis, and especially going out in Sankirtan and preaching to people and, and chanting, such a person is understood to have gone to all the places of pilgrimage, studied all the Vedas, done all kinds of austerities and penances, and uh, listened to so many uh, great scholars of Vedic knowledge and assimilated this knowledge so that in this lifetime they've taken up devotional service full time and are chanting Hare Krishna. It's a verse like that. So, <laughs> uh, that's why Prabhupada says, actually, it's not a fact that devotees are not scholars. They've understood, it's just like Prabhupada is, is, was given the name Bhakti Vedanta. That means that he has understood that Bhakti is the ultimate goal of Vedanta study. Okay. So Prabhupada has given us Bhakti Vedanta on a silver plate. So therefore, we should understand that the whole purpose of knowledge, Vedic knowledge, is to understand Krishna and then to engage in the service of Krishna without any <coughs> hesitation. That is considered the summa bonum, the greatest good of uh, the pursuit of knowledge. So, uh, Lord, uh, therefore, Prabhupada is explaining here, even if, if, if a devotee does not take advantage of the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam or of his spiritual master, if he is sincere in his devotional service, he is helped by Krishna himself within his heart. That's this verse, Tesam Ivanakampartam, 
Aham agyanamam tama nasayami at babavasto gana dipena basvato. Krishna says, to show, show my devotee's special mercy, I dwelling within the heart, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. So, therefore, uh, if the devotee is sincere in his devotional ser service, he's helped by Krishna himself within his heart. So the sincere devotee, notice the word sincere, that means they have no ulterior motive, they simply want to please Krishna, cannot be, such a sincere devotee cannot be without knowledge. The only qualification is that one carry out devotional service in full Krishna consciousness. Then Prabhupada says, the modern philosophers think that without discriminating, one cannot have pure knowledge. For them, the answer is given by the Supreme Lord. Those who are engaged in pure devotional service, even though they be without sufficient education and even without sufficient knowledge of the Vedic principles, are still helped by the Supreme God as stated in this verse. The Lord tells Arjuna that basically there is no possibility of understanding the supreme truth, the absolute truth, the supreme person of God. It's simply by speculating. For the supreme truth is so great that it is not possible to understand him or to achieve him simply by making a mental effort. Man can go on speculating for several millions of years and if he is not devoted, if he is not a lover of the supreme truth, meaning Krishna, he will never understand Krishna or the supreme truth. Only by devotional service is the supreme truth Krishna pleased and by his inconceivable energy he can reveal himself to the heart of the pure devotee. The pure devotee always has Krishna within his heart and with the presence of Krishna who is just like the sun, the darkness of ignorance is at once dissipated. This is the special mercy rendered to the pure devotee by Krishna. Due to the contamination of material associations through many, many millions of births, one's heart is always covered with the dust of materialism. But when one engages in devotional service and constantly chants, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, the dust quickly clears and one is elevated to the platform of pure knowledge. The ultimate goal, Vishnu, can be attained only by this chant and by devotional service and not by mental speculation or argument. The pure devotee does not have to worry about the material necessities of life. He need not be anxious because when he removes the darkness from his heart, everything is provided automatically by the Supreme Lord who is pleased by the loving devotional service of the devotee. This is the essence of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. By studying Bhagavad Gita, one can become a soul completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord and engage himself in pure devotional service. As the Lord takes charge, one becomes completely free from all kinds of materialistic endeavors. So this is what we want. We want Krishna to take charge of us. And why will he do that? If we take complete dependence and surrender to him. So it's proportional. The more we surrender, the more Krishna helps us. The less we surrender, the less Krishna helps us. It's very simple. It's not complicated. And you would be like that too. If you were Krishna, whoever was serving you with love and devotion, you would be partial to them. Just like now, if someone is very nice to you, just like when you go to the checkout counter in Safeway or in... Uh, Fred Meyer, the checkout person, whether it's a man or woman, after they uh, tally up your total and they say, is there anything I can do for you? <laughs> is that right? Is that right? Is that right? They're trained to do that. They must do that. Is there anything else I can do for you? And they say it you know, in a very sweet voice. They don't really mean it. So whenever they say that to me, I say, yeah, can you tell me what the stock market is going to do on Monday? <laughs> you know, uh, of course, you know, they don't really mean it, but they've been trained to say it. They have to say that. 
right? So, but that is like, you know, uh, elephant tears. You know, it's not, it's, not, it's not genuine. However, if we're genuinely dependent on Krishna and understand that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and understand that the only way to approach Krishna is through devotional service, and the more we surrender to the Lord, the more he reveals himself to us. So if you really want knowledge, surrender to Krishna. You don't have to be a bookworm and studying all the time. You simply have to be a lover of Krishna, and Krishna takes care of the rest. And therefore, he says here, the pure devotee does not have to worry about material necessities of life. He need not be anxious because when he removes the darkness from his heart, everything is provided automatically by the Supreme Lord. So what is the darkness of the heart? So this is a type of, uh, it's a metaphor. Instead of saying, when one removes ignorance, which is like darkness, that would be a simile. But here it's saying, when he removes the darkness of the heart, so, what is he referring to by darkness? He's referring to material desires. When they are replaced with spiritual desires to serve the Lord, then there's light in the heart. Or this, uh, as Krishna says here in this verse, there is, uh, there is, uh, <clears throat> Jnana Dipena. What is jnana dipena? It's the light. Deep, deepa is the lamp, right? So the light of knowledge. So the darkness of the heart, of agyana, is, repli is, is replaced with jnana dipena, with the lamp of light. So if we want light in our heart, we have to replace the material desires with spiritual desires to please Krishna. It's very simple. It's not complicated. It, the Mayavadis say, no, 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 no. You have to... You have to Eliminate all desires. But that is impossible. Can you eliminate, eliminate all desires? That means you also eliminate your desires to please Krishna. That's nonsense. That's why Mayavad philosophy doesn't work. It's like communism. It sounds good on paper, but when you try and make it work, it doesn't work. There are a lot of things like that. They sound really good, but when you try and do it, it's like a bad book on... Uh, vegetarian cooking you read a bad book on vegetarian cooking when you do the recipes they don't really work you say so Bhagavad Gita is the perfect book everything that is explained in Bhagavad Gita is workable it works and above all when Krishna says bhaktiya tvananyaya sakya aham evam vidurijana gyatam jastam chitatpena pravestam parantapa in the 11th chapter uh, verse 54, Krishna says, it's only by devotional service that I can be understood. Standing before you, O Arjuna, and thus you can see me directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So, this is Bhakti Vedanta. That the, the ultimate understanding of Vedanta is Bhakti. Devotional service to Krishna. So, also, I wanted to discuss something else today. There's an interesting verse in the first canto, 15th chapter, verse number 6. It says, Arjuna says, I have just lost him, meaning Krishna, whose separation for a moment would render all the universes unfavorable and void, like bodies without life. So we've already read this. But it's very interesting uh, and, and it's very poetic. See, see, Vyasadeva is much greater poet and lyricist and writer than Shakespeare. Shakespeare is, a, is like the microbe in the intestine of a mosquito compared to Vyasadeva, who is like millions of elephants. You know, that, that's, that's the difference between the two. And, Shakespeare is considered one of the greatest uh, lyricists and uh, writers in English liter literature. But he's nothing 
virtually nothing compared to Vyasadeva. So here he's saying, Arjuna is saying, uh, I have just lost him whose separation for a moment would render all the universes unfavorable and void. So see, Arjuna understood that there's not just one universe. There's billions of universes. It's just like as many molecules in your breath when you exhale, there are millions and billions of potential COVID-19 germs, <laughs> you see. And the same way when uh, Mahavishnu exhales, billions of universes emanate from his breath. And each universe is a complete universe, like this whole universe is one complete universe, but there's billions of them. So Arjuna was a very knowledgeable per person. That's why he says, "For uh, I have lost, I have just lost him, meaning Krishna, whose separation for a moment would render all the universes unfavorable and void, like bodies without life, like a dead body. So in the purport, Prabhupada writes, factually, for a living being, there's no one dearer than the Lord. So he doesn't say for the devotees here. He says for the living being. That means everybody and everything, every, every kind of living being. The Lord expands himself by innumerable parts and parcels as Swamsa and Vibhinamsa. Paramatma is the Swamsa part of the Lord, whereas the Vibhinamsa parts are the living beings. As the living being is the important factor in the material body, for without the living being, the material body has no value. Similarly, without Paramatma, the living being has no status quo. Similarly, Brahman or Paramatma has no loka standi without the Supreme Lord Krishna. This is thoroughly explained in the Bhagavad Gita. They are all interlinked with one another or interdependent factors. Thus, in the ultimate issue, the Lord is the summum bonum and therefore the vital principle of everything. So the other day I, I mentioned primary qualities and secondary qualities. Now if you, I don't know if you did your homework and looked up what primary, the explanation of the, of the speculators of primary qualities and secondary qualities. It's a very controversial issue. You have some philosophers that say that length, breadth, width, mass are primary qualities and then secondary qualities are color, taste, and so forth. And then there are other philosophers who say, this is nonsense. You can't say that length, breadth, width, and, and density are, is a primary quality. They actually become secondary qualities because it's based on one's perception, not based on the, on the thing in and of itself. So therefore, it's, it's it's a debated question. What is a primary quality? What is a secondary quality? And the secondary qualities are things that you perceive like the color. Just like you perceive the color of Lake Sammamish during the summer as blue. But in the winter, you perceive, perceive it as gray. Why is that? Because basically it's reflecting the sky, you say. So it's, that's a secondary quality. It's not intrinsic to the the uh, the lake to be blue, whereas a primary quality it's always like that, right? So they say it's it's the length and the width and the density and, and things like that. But even those things are changing. They're not they're not permanent. So therefore it's therefore what is the primary quality of a person? Well. Uh, of material nature? Well, the answer is Krishna, because it's all expanded from him, and later on it will all be absorbed by him. So that means he's the primary quality of everything, and the goal of all knowledge, and the sustainer of all living entities, and so forth. So this is the understanding of the devotees. That's why they become devotees when they understand that. The, the, the Mayavadi said, no, 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 that's, that's, that's not true. There's, there's Brahman, this impersonal light. And Krishna is 
simply an emanation of the Brahman. So they separate things, right? Over here is Brahman, over here is Krishna. But actually there's only one thing. If, if, one, if you talk about oneness, yeah, there's only one thing, there's Krishna. And then he expands everything and then he reabsorbs everything. So he is in everything. He contains everything. He's the source of everything and still he's independent of everything. That means that he is the primary quality of everything. If we understand that point, then the rest of the study is to see how he is everything. So that, that is explained in Bhagavad Gita and in Srimad Bhagavatam and how he is independent of everything at the same time. So Krishna has what you call mutually contradictory attributes or qualities. You and I do not have mutually contradictory qualities. But Krishna does. He's very far away and he's very near. He is outside of everything and he's inside of everything. He is the beginning of everything and he's the end of everything. And, and in the middle he maintains everything. So th these things are inimitable. You can't imitate them. We don't have that power to imitate any of those mutually contradictory qualities of Krishna. Therefore, he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and even Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma cannot imitate in, to the same, uh, let's say, extent as Krishna, uh, Krishna does. He, he far outshines Shiva and Brahma in his mystical powers. So once you understand these things, then you become a real devotee and you become unshakable in your determination. Okay, so are there any questions? So the, the main point with this purport is that as the living being is the important factor in the material body, for without the living being, the material body has no value. As soon as the soul leaves the body, it's dead. Right? Similarly, without Paramatma, the living being has no status quo, is, 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 is not, is, cannot exist because the Paramatma is the source of knowledge. The Paramatma is sustaining the living being, right? Nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitananam. You know, he's, he's, he is maintaining all living beings because he makes the body work, because he provides uh, material sustenance and, and so forth. He, he makes the sun come up and the sun go, go down in a sense and he, there's an infinite supply of energy from the sun. All these things. He, he, he controls the clouds and he controls the rain and everything he's controlling. So without Paramatma we can't do anything. Right? And then similarly Brahman or Paramatma has no locus standing, has no position or, or uh, justification without the Supreme Lord Krishna because it's an expansion of Krishna. This is thoroughly explained in the Bhagavad Gita. They are all interlinked with one another or interdependent factors. There's nothing like the Mayavadi said, oh no, 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 there's, there's only Brahman and everything else is an illusion. Just they're dividing things. But nothing can be divided from Krishna. Om Purnam Ada Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Vasishate. The Lord uh, is the origin of everything. And although so many infinite, complete entities are uh, emanating from Him, like universes and people, still He remains uh, undiminished. He remains complete and whole. He's Purnam. Uh, he's never diminished. So that means that he has a spiritual body that is not like a material body. A material body uh, is always diminishing. And you have to replenish. And then it diminishes. And you replenish. And it diminishes. And finally it doesn't work anymore. And you have to throw it away. Right. You get another body. Krishna's body is transcendental. And it's infinite. And, and 
so many things are emanating from him and he never is diminished in any way. So therefore, if you apply mathematics or arithmetic to Krishna, it's a different type of arithmetic. It's one plus one equals one and one minus one equals one, you see. So for us, one plus one equals two and one minus one equals zero. But for Krishna, one plus one is one and one plus one minus one is one. So, so he, he's different than us. Okay, we'll start right there. Haribo. So Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. So 